technology is the most powerful change in the world of education. Welcome to the video interview series Augmented Reality Based Technology in the Classroom, delivered to you by Clever Books Company. Hello everyone, we have a fantastic guest today, Melanie. Hello. Hi Ina, thank you very much for having me. Fantastic. Thank you for being with us today and thank you for uh, being open to share your professional experience and uh, in, rela in relation to augmented reality technology and education. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, we'll start with that. I'll give you words. Maybe you can introduce yourself, tell a little bit more to our listeners about your background and what you do, and then we'll uh, come to the topic and explore it a bit more deeply. Sounds great. Thank you. Yes, my name is Melanie Moz. I actually come from originally from the technology industry. I spent a number of years at IBM and Lenovo working in a variety of business roles from sales to marketing to training to operations. And in the last year and a half, two years, I actually just completed a Master of Education in Digital Technology degree. And through my research, I focused on the potential um, and affordances afforded by technology such as augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, and a little bit of artificial intelligence thrown in there for good measure. But my experience in this area is such that I have a personal invested interest in how technology can truly transform how we learn and collaborate in the 21st century. Melanie, would you be interested to talk about today uh, the research that you've done, the findings and the outcome, or would you be interested to share more uh, a practical application of the technology in the classroom and the, the case studies? Um, so I can actually do a bit of both because my research uh, can absolutely be translated into practical applications. So um, I completed over the year, over the last, I guess it's been almost two years now. Uh, a lot of research into the area. We've got in publication um, right now a AR, VR, MR lit review for K-12 education in specific. Um, and we've just published a portion of our of the study that I did, which was looking at how to use AR in a classroom with a marginalized student set. So we did a study where we had a group of students who came from a variety of challenging backgrounds. And we're part of something that here in Canada, um, or in Ontario specifically, we call care, custody, and treatment. So they were, for example, students that lived in foster care or group homes or had challenging situations at home, and as well had a variety of challenges from a learning perspective, including learning disabilities, um, post-traumatic stress, fetal alcohol syndrome, et cetera. And so what we did was we spent, um, or what I did was I spent a year in the classroom with the, with the teacher. I wasn't there every day, but uh, regularly through the week, and I worked hand in hand with the classroom teacher um, to explore what it, what it would look like to implement augmented virtual reality um, technologies into a class like this. So we started at the very beginning where we uh, explored the technology, I guess, I guess you would say. So provided them with the tools that they would need in order to explore different um, augmented reality apps. So everything from, you know, pop-up books to uh, Pokemon Go to, um, you know, a variety of different uh, anatomy and, and chemistry types of uh, AR apps that are available. And we also did an exploration of virtual reality. So things like Google Expeditions, like um, a lot of YouTube, there's, there's pretty great, you know, 360 video YouTube stuff. So we focused on what I refer to a lot as budget VR in my research because it was the one that was most affordable in that budget VR refers to when you use a smartphone and a, and a cheap kind of viewer as opposed to something that is much more higher end and, and costly like an Oculus Rift or, or something. We didn't really go into the higher end ones mostly from a cost perspective, accessibility perspective. Um, and so we started off exploring it and working to determine what were the curriculum connections that might actually exist for these technologies. Because, you know, it's really important consideration 
when you're implementing technology into, into any sort of a learning environment that we consider, you know, why are we implementing the technology? You know, a lot of times I think we look at it like, you know, shiny new thing and throw it in and, and either replicate uh, the existing uh, teaching that's happening um, by using technology. But the question becomes, you know, if, if our instruction is working the way um, it needs to be and people are successfully uh, learning in, in the existing environment, then why are we looking to change that? What is it that we're looking to change? And so my real interest in how these technologies um, can, can make a big difference comes a lot of the way around to say, um, previously when we had to be able to read information and previously when we had to be able to um, answer questions on a test, it was very easy to have the teacher stand at the front of the classroom and, and essentially lecture to the class. And so a lot of us learned that way. And we were successful and, and went forward, but in today's world where we're getting more and more data, you know, they say that every year there's as much data created as all of the years before that. Um, we need to explore different ways of exploring that information. And so what we ended up doing in the, in the class was the teacher decided that this particular class needed to do a unit on nutrition. They were bringing in poor selections for snacks. Um, they didn't understand healthy eating. Um, they didn't know, you know, a lot about how to keep themselves healthy and why that was important to them. And so we did a nutrition unit where we actually taught them how to cook. We picked some basic um, foods, so, you know, everything from chicken to um, eggs to, I think we included beef. And we had, for example, with the chicken, we, we roasted a chicken and created a chicken meal. And then we showed them how to take the leftovers and make it into a soup or how to take the leftovers and make it into, you know, chicken tacos or fajitas or something like this. So we had an entire lesson plan around that. And what we did with the augmented reality was using the app Eurasma, we actually uh, taught the student how to um, augment the, in the end, which what, what was a recipe book. And so they created this recipe book of all these different meals that they had, had uh, learned how to cook in the classroom and augmented the pictures. For example, they were doing everything from taking pictures um, to, to short little videos that were, they put up on YouTube, to um, creating the recipe in PowerPoint, to, um, and then they would augment uh, as we went through the recipe book all these you know, sessions. So then they could take it home to their family and essentially the goal was um, teach you know, their families about nutrition as well. So it became a you know, bigger endeavor uh, than others. And, the importance of the augmented reality in, in an instance like that was that um, here was one book that the students had created themselves. They, they gained substantial di digital literacy skill sets. And that was actually one of my findings was that although these students had used technology throughout their um, schooling career here and there, a lot of them were identified and had, you know, board supplied quote unquote laptops. They really lacked a lot of basic skill sets, including you know, how to save a file so that they could be able to find it, um, how to edit um, a, a picture, how to um, create a, for example, the recipe in PowerPoint, how to utilize PowerPoint. So when we talk about you know, augmented reality and virtual reality as these you know, emerging and, and, and et cetera technologies, you know, there's a lot of basic digital skill sets that go into the use of, of these newer technologies that, um, that the, the students need to have as well, right? So um, we weren't asking them to create an augmented reality app. We were asking them to use the existing app to create something else. And so um, it was a really interesting experience because at the end, the students had a number, a number of um, digital skill sets that were, you know, across a number of different technologies. And the advantage of using augmented reality was that they could go home and um, 
and allow the technology to pull out information, everything from uh, a video of them um, cutting up the chicken. How do you cut up a chicken? You know, what did it look like when I was preparing? So if somebody struggled with, you know, reading a recipe, they could follow it, for example, on YouTube um, and, and see it in a different format. And I think the real advantage of, of these technologies is exactly that, the ability to, to provide information in a different format, not just the text-based format. And so that was a really long <laughs> explanation of, of that particular case study. But a lot of the students at the end of that um, were able to see in the future how they would take and use augmented reality in providing, um, for example, uh, a differentiated essay or story to um, explain their knowledge in a number of different classes that they could see in the future. So they thought that the skill set that they had gained was repl replicable for, um, or repeatable, pardon me, for the additional classes that they would do in the future as they went through school. So I think we're just at the beginning of, of using these technologies to do things that are not text-based. And I think that that real ability to be able to pull in multiple um, digital sources of information um, and teaching the kids how to create those is is really you know at the at the mo at the cusp of why these technologies have a lot of importance. Wow, that's very interesting. A fantastic case study. Thank you, Melanie, for sharing that. And you've mentioned that you used it with uh, kids, uh, but you haven't mentioned the age group. So the age group of these particular students was grades 6, 7, 8. So they okay. ranged in age between uh, 10 and 13 kind of thing. It was a one class um, that had multiple grades within, within the one class. And there was, in the particular um, case study, there was a class of eight kids um, because it's what we call a small, a small class uh, due to their constraints from, uh, from the challenges they had. And so we were able to use it, uh, we were able to do the case study in that particular environment. And the application of, of being able to use those examples with that particular class, because a lot of times people look at those students and they, they refer to them as at risk. And we prefer to look at them at, as promise. So what is the potential of these students? Um, let's, let's push for the potential um, to be recognized as opposed to you know, um, uh, undermining what maybe the potential might look like. Okay, and uh, it would be great to hear from you. What do the students they've set, themselves said or the feedback they gave? Right, well, you know, and, and that was a really interesting experience as well because at the beginning, um, one of the challenges that we faced in the classroom was that a lot of the students um, exhibited what I would call um, uh, a lack of resilience. You know, they 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 had a, a learned helplessness. They were used to um, kind of an environment where they weren't successful, and so they had stopped essentially trying. And so at the very beginning, um, and well, not even the very beginning, the first couple of months of uh, it, that was when we were doing the, doing the exploration of the technologies and that sort of thing. They really. Um, if it was at least if it was a little bit hard, they kind of put their hands up and and you know I can't do it. I it's too difficult, and so it took a long time to build up the capacity for the students to be able to um, persevere and support them in their development of that um, grit. You know we talk about a lot of times. You know because these kids, uh, due to their circumstances, really um, because they're not necessarily in an environment where they're successful very often, you know, I think they get a little bit uh, discouraged and, and of course that affects, you know, their capacity to, to, to develop or to utilize in a, in a um, you know, the, the experience of resilience for them. So at the beginning, this was a big challenge, you know, we constantly had to support them and pump them up and you know, uh, a lot of hand-holding at the beginning. But as they went through, um, uh, most of the students, there were two that, that didn't develop as much resilience, but most of the students in the study, by the end of it, 
were able to do things without a lot of hand-holding, um, they might need a constant reminder uh, or, an, or a, you know, a, a periodic reminder, pardon me, if they were trying to do something that they hadn't done in a couple of weeks, for example. But they had the um, shifted their capacity to believe that they really could be successful because they had seen little successes along the way. Like, like this project took, you know, a long time. <laughs> you know, it was kind of like January to April, little okay. pieces at a time, right? And um, that's also because we had to do the cooking and there was like a lot of pieces to it that <sighs> were outside of, you know, it wasn't every day, all day sort of thing. And so, um, you know, they, by the end, when we presented the book to their um, principal and their, you know, their teacher and, and kind of some other people, you know, the pride that the students felt for having been able to accomplish, you know, what they had and being able to tangibly hold the recipe book that they themselves had um, created in their hands and be able to show it to, you know, um, uh, educators that they looked up to was um, was immense. And, you know, they made, they, there was multiple comments made throughout the process, but especially on the day when they presented it that said, you know, like, this is the best day ever. You know, this is, you know, I love, like, they were so excited to be able to show what they had been able to do to um, a series of educators who actually hadn't seen this, been, this be created by any other class, let alone a class of, you know, at-risk students that, you know, maybe um, weren't thought to be the ones <laughs> that might bring this, you know, this technology example forward, right? So, um, it was really exciting, and the pride, and I think, um, the resilience are, are two of the, the big findings that uh, that we focus on in, in terms of reflection upon uh, the case study and and what you could you know you could see in in a you know in another environment should you repeat such a such a case study. Uh, that's probably was most proud moment for you as well, you know, for students to achieve such success and also to for themselves to understand and be proud of what they have done. Oh, very much so. I think it was one of those moments when, you know, it was almost like a uh, a TV special where you say <laughs> we were sitting in the room and it was all we could do not to start crying, you know, as the, as the different students talk, stood up and talked about their experience because, you know, we developed a, a bond and we wanted to see them successful and, you know, we felt pride for them and it was just so rewarding that they themselves felt it at the end as well. Okay. And you also mentioned that um, there were children with special needs within that group. Did I understand correctly? Uh, yeah. So we had, um, there was a couple of kids. So the nature of the class is that the kids have either behavioral problems. Um, there was one student who had post-traumatic stress disorder. There was one who was suspected fetal alcohol syndrome, um, which we think was uh, um, a diagnosed learn an undiagnosed learning disability, mm -hmm. and uh, there was one boy in the class who was um, autistic, mm -hmm. and so there was a variety of different challenges. Just I think the nature of the class supported um, supported the need for differentiated instruction. Okay, and. Um if we talk about the augmented reality, one of the uh, core benefits, I would say, based on the research, is that the augmented reality helps uh, kids with special needs to uh, visu visualize the, uh, certain objects and understand how it works much better. Do you think that uh, the kids that were in your team um, also benefit, uh, did benefit from using augmented reality tool uh, in this project? Um, so, some of the very, you know, one of the areas, I guess, that was a little bit unexpected was that the, the use of the Erasma app requires um, students to have a number of basic digital literacy skill sets. So, for example, things as simple as saving a file, um, the ability to edit a picture or a video, um, how to attach a file onto, you know, the program Erasma, um, some of that kind of editing capability. And it was interesting because when we went into the class, and this is something you hear a lot when people talk about implementing technology 
in a classroom. A number of times um, I'll hear teachers say, oh, you know, augmented reality, virtual reality, and they get a little <laughs> concerned about, you know, I don't have those skills, right, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I always laugh and I, and I think, yeah, but you do. <laughs> you probably do and you probably don't realize it, right? Because I think that there's this level of fear that as the students are so much more advanced um, in terms of technology, than the teachers and I think um, you know you have to be very careful with that kind of a comment because are students better at games and sw you know swiping left or right on their tablet well maybe but I wouldn't necessarily say those are core technology skill sets that you know are going to translate into something down the road and um, there are always you know kids that are that are you know very advanced doing you know advanced coding and and all those types of things but the vast majority of students um, aren't doing that and the vast majority of teachers don't need to be you know um, able to do all of that either and so for the use of augmented reality specifically if you use an app like Erasma skill sets are, are exactly that you know naming a file you know taking a picture and editing it um, uploading a, a video to YouTube, um, editing a short little video, and a lot of teachers have those skill sets. I mean, I haven't met a teacher yet who doesn't have the capability to upload a picture to an email, you know, kind of <laughs> thing. But that very that very skill set was lacking from this particular class, and I found it um, challenging to see that uh, happening because this was a class of students who have had technology assigned to them for you know years now right like they are identified learn you know with learning disabilities and different challenges um, but they've they've been supplied technology but maybe not really taught you know kind of basic skill sets to use it so all these emerging technologies as they come forward um, are you know at the very basic um, require you know require basic understanding of how to operate a computer you know how to type a little bit, how to save a file, how to attach a file, how to um, edit a picture. You know, so a lot of these things we're talking about aren't, um, you know, super advanced. I guess is maybe how you would say it. And so I think that one of the things to consider, and one of the things that we found was, you know, the importance of ensuring that there is that basic digital understanding across all classes, and that can start at a pretty young age right I mean I remember when I was in school and they taught typing and yet somehow today we don't even teach that right, right. and of course there's voice to text but I mean you know a lot of students don't know how to use that either right so you know a lot of these things that um, come into play when we're creating um, using an augmented reality app or a virtual reality app are not um, super advanced you know super advanced skill set right um, if you're going to create the augmented reality app, well, perhaps, <laughs> you know, you're going to be using 3D coding, so you're going to have something different. But, you know, just from a use of something existing, there are huge opportunities for, um, for students to be able to do it uh, themselves. And so I think that that's one of the most interesting findings that we had was that these technologies, as much as we call them emerging, and the reality is they go back you know, a long, long way. You know, when you think of augmentation, you know, people will talk about panoramic pictures, right, back mm -hmm. from the 1800s, and even probably before that, right? So, um, virtual reality's been around a long time as well, and they've never caught on. Um, you know, sometimes people will talk about Pokemon Go, and the reason that they talk about it is because we had a collision of, you know, all of a sudden everybody had a smartphone that mm -hmm. was capable of doing augmented reality, and out comes this app that had this huge um, following from a Pokemon perspective through the company itself, and all of a sudden everybody knows about augmented reality. And that's, you know, they talk about that being the cusp, that the technology kind of tipped over um, mm -hmm. the acceptance chasm at that point in time, right? So, that's nice. um, you know, so, so all of a sudden we in our pockets carry you know, little computers that are capable of doing things that, you know, historically we've never been able to um, necessarily consider. And so I think a lot of times just the, the power of having those technologies 
um, around us uh, provides huge opportunities to, to do things with information that we haven't even, you know, necessarily thought of or, or maybe needed to do previously. It was interesting that you mentioned that some teachers uh, feel a little bit reluctant uh, from using augmented reality because uh, they feel they're not uh, good enough advanced uh, in understanding how the technology works. But I think it's also the difference uh, between, uh, for example, Erasmus, the application that you're talking about, the program, is more built your own augmented reality things. But uh, there are a lot more uh, ready-to-use applications that already have the pre um, pre-programmed scenario and uh, right. where the teacher doesn't even have to have uh, certain skills, you know, to be able right. to operate that. Did you come across um, any uh, ready-to-use applications for your research or just in general in professional career? And what um, relevance to the curriculum uh, those applications have? Oh, yes. Um, so there's, there, there are some in terms of existing applications. There's a couple of augmented reality books, and, and one of the interesting things about augmented reality, so when we talked about at the beginning, um, I did an exploration with the class, and they, you know, were given the um, tablet, for example, and then the books, and they, they used the apps in order to um, read the book to them sort of thing. Um, but, the, you know, we're really limited in terms of the capabilities of those books today. So, for example, there's a real opportunity from a literacy perspective to really engage a student in those um, in those uh, readings. So there's this book, and it's it's an app of a book that there's a there's a written version of the book. Um, there's an augmented reality app of the book, and there's a um, video of the book, and uh, the video is on YouTube and. In, in the book, so the reading part, so I'll give you an example. So I did a little mini study with this particular class. And so um, I brought the book in, and this was our examination of how we were going to use AR. And so, you know, does anybody want to read the book? Well, of course, in a class of non-readers, nobody raised their hand. So I said, all right, well, let's gather around, and I'll read the book to you. So um, we read the book. And then the next section was, okay, now you're going to use the app, the AR app, and you're going to um, explore the book through the AR app. And so the a this particular AR app actually read the book to the student. So it, well, it read all of the words and the pictures became animated and, and active, and that was the aug obviously the augmented reality part. Um, and so the kids explored the book that way. And then after this, the kids explored the book um, using the YouTube video, which actually had no words and was in, um, and it was just a video of the storyline, essentially. And at the end, we had a debrief um, to talk about the book at each, you know, at each section and then overall at the end. And the things that the students noticed from um, the differences between when they had watched the book, you know, without words on the video, and when they had seen the AR app um, and it had read to them, and then when they had read the book, the differences in their comprehension of the story and the things that they had noticed were remarkable. And the interesting thing that I found was any time I would bring that book to the class, they would pick it up again. But if I didn't have the app, like if I didn't have the tablet for them to explore the book, they wouldn't pick the book up. Interesting. You know, these were these were kids who who didn't they don't love reading, right? They don't, you know, they struggle with um, they struggle with reading, and and a lot of them can read, but they choose not to. For you know, and that's a whole I think other conversation. Right. But, yeah. Um, but they, uh, you know, they would, every time I would bring in the, that book, they would go and they would pick up the app and they would go through the book again and again and again. Now, unfortunately, that's the only AR book, and, and not to say there's one that I haven't found, because there very well could be other ones that I'm not aware of, but mm -hmm. that's the only one where the story was read to the student. The other AR books that I've um, had the experience of using that have a variety of apps attached to them. Um, they augment different parts of the book. A lot of them are science-based. There are very few tailored to girls, 
-hmm. which is an interesting, there's one, and the ones that are tailored to girls are um, like princess <laughs> types okay. of AR books, um, but a lot of them were, you know, science and math and, you know, let's make the um, beaker pop out of the page, and they had different things. But they're still limited, and I think part of that, uh, um, I think part of that is a um, a cost thing, right? Like, if we build it, is there a market for it, right? So it's kind of like a cause and effect. Like, what comes first? Do we build all these books mm -hmm. and then um, wait for people to buy them? So what I'm seeing happen in that particular market is there's a lot of magazines, for example, like in Ontario, we have one called um, Brain Space. And they're starting to augment their book or their magazine that comes out mm -hmm. every month. So there'll be there'll be information that's applicable um, to different parts of, of the magazine, and they'll have I think they have a marker on it, and it'll pop up whatever they think is is uh, additional supplementary material. So I think there's a huge opportunity for that, and that's becoming more and more common. But the challenge I think we have right now is that every book. And every thing specific to augmented reality requires its own app. Mm -hmm. You're yes, constantly yeah. downloading a different app. You know what I mean? And I think until we can agree to create some universal type of an app, mm -hmm. I think we limit, you know, how quickly things will um, be able to be accessible because um, because you can only download so many apps, right? You know? That's right. And, and then the same thing with the book, you know, you have to buy the book and um, a lot of times the app will be free, but it's somewhat limited and, and doesn't necessarily um, offer anything unique really that's beyond, right. beyond yeah. an, you know, something that, that's been my experience. I'm sure there's people that have spent a lot more time on it, okay. on studying that particular thing than, than I have, but. No, but that's great. Well, thank you very much for sharing. And uh, would you be able to provide any um, any links to the research you've done or any additional information that you feel uh, it would be valuable for our listeners or readers? Uh, sure. Well, I have a um, website where I've been compiling a lot of the different books and um, lesson plans that we've started to develop or people have started to see. And um, I've started to link some of the publications on it. Now, it's called arvr4education.weebly.com, and I can send you that. And um, that's just where I started. It wasn't, it wasn't originally intended as, as a, you know, a place for people to go, but it's where I started um, going because, of course, all the resources um, that I have are electronic. And so yeah. when I would go and talk to teachers or different people, um, you know, it's not like me giving them a piece of paper with a bunch of webs. That's very useful just to send the link to your web. Yes. Okay, well, uh, Melanie, thank you very much. And probably one of the last things, maybe uh, you can give one or two advices to teachers that haven't uh, tried the use of, of augmented reality in the classroom. I would say um, the applications for the curriculum are almost unlimited. You can tie this type of a technology into learning for just about any subject. Um, everything from literacy to science to math to drama to, you know, I did it with a cooking book. So, I mean, you can do it with um, just about anything. And the real value is that these students, um, the information that they have available to them isn't only accessible through a book. And so they have to learn how to navigate and effectively um, understand the information that's available to them in a variety of digital formats, everything from videos to news feeds to publications to articles to, you know, online magazines, for example, to, to whatever, you know, whatever new things come out. And the reality is in the future, um, and I would argue probably today, they have to be able to access and make sense of that information in such a way that they can use that information to solve future problems. That's why we focus on technologies is that, you know, unfortunately we live in a world where we can't just read everything anymore. Um, our brains just are not going to be big enough <laughs> to absorb, you know, the, the, the massive amount of information that's coming at us. And so um, just start with little things, you know, you know, but there's lots of free apps. Um, that are available. There's something. There's um, a company called 
uh, Daiquiri, which provides opportunity to access a whole bunch of different things like 4D and um, they call it 4D anatomy and 4D chemistry, um, all of which is free. The app's free, the printable materials are free, um, and those are for kids, you know, there's, they have lesson plans on their website, for example. Um, all of that's linked off my website as well. And even the use of Erasma from a, um, you know, we have some how-to um, information on the website as well that takes you kind of step by step how to get yourself started on that. Um, so if you invested, you know, half an hour of your time, um, you'd be pretty familiar with um, what you needed to do. And, and as long as you're, you have access to a couple of tablets, you know, you can, or, or a couple of computers for that matter, you can set your students up to kind of start to explore. And so there's a lot of different ways you can, um, you know, you can, without costing any money, you can, uh, or, or costing very little money, and using technology that probably already exists, um, either in your school or maybe even in your classroom. The main thing is to try, right? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah give it a try it. and get yeah. your feet wet. And the skills, I promise, I have yet to come across the skill set um, specifically using the AR that I think that um, at least all the teachers I've met um, would have trouble with. Okay. Well, Melanie, thank you so much for all your time. And I hope that our readers and our listeners uh, will enjoy the uh, information you provide and will try the resources. So yeah. thank you for being with us today. Perfect. Thank you so much. Everything changes.